Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 25th. First up, this is from 1954 Shadow. Just like Contour has come back from the dead, it appears Winamp has come back from the dead. Uh, a firm called Radioonomy, a firm from Belgium that's a radio business, has not only required Winamp from AOL, they also purchased the Shoutcast service too. I don't know if some of you have had an account in Shoutcast, but it's like a small radio station you can um, buy yourself. Um, some time every year you can get a subscription to it uh, my account has been dormant for so long I don't even know if it even exists or whatever like that but for a little while I did a just a little bit of experimentation with a little shoutcast radio station of my own but didn't really get into it that much but yeah those two things now are owned by AOL but AOL also as part of the exchange too they they think they got somewhere in the, in the ranges of it's not known exactly but maybe five to ten million dollars to purchase these two items from AOL but in exchange AOL also got some stock so AOL now has a stake in Radioonomy themselves and next up this is from Sarah Kay this kinda goes into a an idea I've always had myself and it seems that science is bearing this out that exposing your children to a little bit of dirt and germs and stuff like that in early age isn't necessarily a bad thing so this is from uh, sciencedaily.com prenatal prenatal pet exposure may actually be key factors in um, easing allergy risk in children there's a factor called and let me get this right this is uh, called immunoglobin E where they measure this in children and they can tell whether they tend towards allergies or not by the level of immunoglobin E in their system and by doing a test with over a thousand different women in households that either had pets or didn't have pets they measured the levels and in the children sometimes their levels of uh, immunoglobin E were 28 percent lower in some cases 33 percent lower and that would be a sign that those children born to those women in households that had pets would be way less likely to develop allergies and other types of symptoms later on in life so um, as usual every link to all the articles I'm talking about will down be down below in the description but I've always been of the mindset too that uh, let your kids play in dirt let them have exposure to things I mean um, obviously you know be a caring parent and don't let the kids do whatever they want but a little bit of exposure to a little bit of dirt and germs and stuff like that will not help at all and it seems like more and more work on science has been really bearing that out for sure this next one is from Gadgets and Wheels. He asked me to look into the fact, and I've been reading up on this too, that um, some people are claiming that our sun is going dormant right now. Well, as I've read some different articles, both from the BBC, the reference he gave me, and then also uh, some other articles, which I'll post the links to them, it seems like right now the sun is in a lower period of activity than they've been able to track in the last hundred years. but. Uh, most scientists are not calling it dormant right now. They're saying it's still about maybe 50% of the activity they would expect it to have. But because it has decreased in the period where it normally would be more active, um, that is giving them cause to concern. Um, they're not saying that we're headed for a new maunder minimum. For those of you that don't know, that was the thing called the little ice age in the 1700s with the, the maunder minimum. But um, that does not really give you a pattern to go by. I mean, when you're talking about sun activity, we've only been measuring it over the period of maybe 100 years with real technical equipment and maybe 200 years past that with uh, any ability to measure it at all. So one slow period does not really make a pattern, plus the fact you have to realize that during the Maunder Minimum Little Ice Age period, there was also the factor of a lot of volcanic activity. As soon as you spew particles up into the upper atmosphere that block out sunlight, that's going to factor in in a big way too so that could have been as much or more of the cause during the little ice age than the lack of the solar activity so yeah it's definitely something to be concerned about but nothing to panic over uh, it may also be a little bit of a counteracting to the extra greenhouse gas we have too so overall it may balance itself out in the long run but um, I will definitely um, I enjoy when you guys ask about these questions, and I will definitely, if anything significantly changes in the future that I know of, um, I will let you know about the um, lowered activity in the sun. They all, uh, I also want to mention that they had been posting that um, a few days ago there was an a, a period of time to where there was just a couple of sunspots. That is still well within the normal range, even during periods of high activity. There's such a variance in the amount of sunspots that a short period of time with only a few sunspots even during the most active phases of the sun would be still within the perfect normal range so 
Um, don't let one picture of the sun put anybody in any kind of panic or anything. This next one is also from 1954 Shadow. This is um, one of the other drone um, personal flying robot copters. And this one's kind of neat because it's a fold-up model. Um, they're not saying it'll fold up maybe a, to the extent where you can put it in your jeans pocket, but maybe a coat pocket or something like that. And the interesting thing about this, this is another stick uh, Kickstarter project, and their goal was to reach $35,000 by this coming March. Well, right as of now, I just checked, and it's over $431,000 they've raised in pledges. So I think this thing is absolutely going to go through. Um, it's amazing looking. I mean, it's they, they claim it'll carry a half a pound, and it will have a, a time comparable to the other helicopters, uh, the other choppers in the range of uh, $500 or less. So I'm guessing a flight time of about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. To me, it would have to be to be reasonable, and they show it lifting a GoPro camera. Um, I don't know what the limit is that you'd have to you'd have to go and look at the details of that if you actually want to be one of the first ones to get one of the models of these you probably have to pledge something in that range of five hundred dollars but you can pledge a minimum of a dollar but at this point well over the goal so I really wouldn't be worried about it unless it's something you just want to invest in but really cool idea it's a three blade design um, I always myself kind of prefer the five bladed design because I think with five blades if you lose one you could still maintain some stability but I think in this case if one of the three blades went dead I think your, your GoPro would be in for a tumble. Still, really good idea. And another one, too, The uh, I've talked about this before. This is a full-size electric um, chopper. This is called the Volocopter, the 18-bladed model. And I've talked about that before. I got a link from uh, my friend Glover International, my photographer friend and biker buddy, Glover. Um, this is just a little bit more information about it. It's still going back to November, but this is an interesting. This is a, a video from... Uh, it's called Engineering Update on YouTube, and I'll put the link to that down there before. And they basically just talk a little bit more about the control system, a little bit more about how the battery system works for it. But um, I'm really liking the fact that they're advancing with electronics and electric motors to the extent now to where it seems like they're going to have a practical, um, totally electric helicopter that you can fly as a person and sit inside. I mean, if they're developed, those kind of developments too on that thing like a helicopter. That's going to lead to huge advancements in uh, electric for trucks and cars and things like that. I mean, uh, if, if you can do something like that, lift a load in the air and make it stable, they're talking about the control system is going to be so easy that it could basically fly by itself. Uh, might mean the fact that just Joe average person that can get a driver's license for a car could probably qualify for a helicopter pilot's license with those kind of helicopters. So um, just the advancements are really encouraging. It's something like that that uses electric motors. If they can pull up that weight and fly it, they can surely make practical electric cars, I think. So anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.